And then we had the Drew McIntyre, Bobby Lashley, Hell in a Cell match for the title. And they went uh, 25 minutes. And the first 20 minutes was very good. Yeah, they really good. beat the hell out of each other. Drew just dominated this guy for seemingly like 10 minutes. Just beat him all over the place. And finally, uh, Lashley gets some heat, works him over for a while. Everything is going along great. And then finally, we have the ref bump. So McIntyre is, uh, he's grabbed this chair, Lashley shoves him, and McIntyre takes out the referee. Drew then hits the future shock DDT. He makes the cover. There's no referee. So Drew says, open up that cage. Let's get another referee in here. So they open up the cage, and the referee comes in. And McIntyre hits the Claymore. He goes for the cover. But MVP pulls the referee out of the ring. Uh, It was like, it's so, you know, it's not their fault, even though it's their spot that they've been doing for 20 years. But, like, I can handle that every now and then. But, like I said, like, I've seen three shows in a row where, where the world title match has had that spot. And it was other companies, so it's not their fault. But I have also seen it, and I'm so sick of it. So that didn't help. But, I mean, I guess from their their perspective, and this is the truth, is most of their audience doesn't watch the other shows. So for their audience, it's, you know, it's not like it's been the same spot three times this month or, you know, in the, well, since May 30th. So I guess, but in a Hell in a Cell match... Where the whole storyline, the whole storyline of the match is that this time there can be no interference. That's why he asked for a Hell in a Cell. And then he loses due to interference. And not just one interference spot, but multiple. You know, it's like, whatever. You know, what's what? It's like, you know, I, I feel like you do a step to keep something from happening and it still does so it's kind of like what was the what was the reason for the stip in the first place so mvp pulls this guy out of the ring and then the referees shut and lock the door so mvp is stuck in the cell so drew beats him up a little bit and then goes back to work on lashley and there's another weird spot where lashley gave him like a slam off the apron through a table to the floor yeah that was nasty and there's a there, suddenly a hand goes back underneath the ring. Who was under the ring and why? I don't know. Did you notice like, that? No. There's like somebody underneath the ring. I don't know if they were there to like make sure that you know those guys when they go to get a weapon, but there's like not a weapon there, so they have to go to the other side or whatever. Yeah. I mean, maybe they have a guy under the ring now who's like has to make sure that all the gimmicks are in the right spot. But it was weird. Like this hand just flies under the the ring apron. The thing. So, uh, finally, McIntyre, he gets in the ring, and he sets up for the Claymore again, and they're shooting in such a way that you know someone's going to grab his leg, and sure enough, it is MVP, and he grabs his leg, and Drew tries to grab MVP, but he turns around, and Lashley rolls him up and pins him. So, Mm -hmm. as a result of this, Drew cannot wrestle for the title again as long as MVP has it. So, that's the end of the feud. Which is well and good. Okay, so so um, I'm thinking, like, who is ready for the next challenge? I mean, I guess they can. There's, there's always, you know, there's always Brock. As of this afternoon, I know there was no deal with Brock, but got to figure they're going to call him. Um, Bray Wyatt, Bill Goldberg, you know, you, you booked yourself into a corner. I mean, is there anyone else on the TV show that we see each week that's ready randy orton would, is always a guy that they would throw you know in in one of these positions but if we're talking about a match for like july i mean they're probably gonna do like oh we have a battle royal on raw the winner faces lashley something dumb like that but if we're talking SummerSlam, i mean i think it's got to be a lesnar lesnar bray wyatt i guess or, you could or, do a goldberg because he's a big jacked up dude like lashley yeah, yeah. Yeah, or Bray Wyatt. It'd be a first time. Yeah, Bray Wyatt. Uh... Well, I mean, but they could st- I'm just saying it's a name. It's a name on the roster, that, and he's been gone for a while. It is, the- but I mean, imagine this feud. Oh, like, we're not- gonna have magic with MVP and Lashley. I know it'd be terrible. I mean, but you know what? Be horrible. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. It would be. It would be. But with Bill Goldberg, I mean, 
you know, you're getting a four minute match. That's fine. The show can only be three hours long, dude. We gotta have some quick matches here. I guess. I guess. You know, and uh, I mean, with Lesnar, you know, I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, actually, it's big. You know, it's it's a big match. Dude, Lesnar uh, and Lashley, I feel, is a match that fans have talked about. Not like a a big gonna do tons no, of buys something. on pay per view, but that's it's a match something. that nobody ever saw. Yeah, it never, seems like wrestled. a match that would be really cool. They've never done it. Yeah, that's that's a, yeah. that's a good match if they get him to do it. Um, but it's going to cost them. You know, it's it's going to cost them a lot. Well, of money. you know what? They can afford it. Yeah, they can afford it. They're going to lay off ten people <laughs> and, and bring in. Uh, quite frankly, they could re- afford it without laying off the ten people. But I know. What you're but saying. they're going to do it. I know. <laughs> Last pay per view from the Thunderdome, everybody. Yeah. So there you go. Maybe. Uh, well, you know what? They'll have really great crowd reactions in Fort Worth. Um, they're going to be in there. They're going to sell a crowd. People are going to be really happy. They're going to do the, the briefcase matches. Thank God it ain't going to be in Titan Towers throwing people off the over the roof, and then they'll be fine the next day. None you know, I hate to even say this, but now that you mention it, if this was, in fact, and it is, the last pay-per-view in the Thunderdome, I'm actually flabbergasted that they did not do more magical bullshit with Alexa Bliss while they could. Because you can't do care. that stuff with a fan, with the fans there. I don't care. You can hypnotize with the fans there. No, you can hypnotize, but like, there's a lot of magic tricks that they've done in the Thunderdome that you could only do in the Thunderdome, and this was their last chance to do it, and all they came up with was hypno- hypnosis. I wonder how the hypnosis is going to work with fans. Oh, it's going to die. It's going to die. Well, we'll see. You never know. You never know. You never know. I mean, it could die. It wouldn't surprise me. And there's certain. There, I, I'm certain at many different points, had they done this angle, it would have died. But you just never know. The people may be very forgiving. Uh, maybe they'll be forgiving for a month. May, you know, you, it's like it's going to be. An, it's going to be interesting. Every, everything is new. I think at first everyone's going to get a pass. But um, dude, you know, I'm, I mean, a, I'm a fan I, I, of wrestling, Dave. And if I buy a ticket to the very first show they run with a live crowd, and I see that Alexa stuff, I ain't being nice about it. It sucks. I agree. They're not I, getting no free pass. They may. I don't think so. They may. You. There's going to be plenty of stuff for those fans to cheer. They'll was, they'll have energy there, to, there was, to boo one horrible thing. There was there there wasn't there there was what was there to cheer other than the Bianca Belair match? What was there to cheer tonight? In the end, I mean, like during the matches, yes. Oh well, yeah, the during end. the matches. But as far as finishes, there will be a loss of booing. That Charlotte Flair rematch would have been oh, eviscerated by a live crowd. Oh oh oh, without a doubt, without a doubt, that there's no way there's no way that that wouldn't have been um, that, that that one could not have worked. <laughs> Even the crowd. guy with the button played a lot of boos for that finish. Yeah. It, it, that one could that one could not work in front of a live crowd. People would have hated it. Um, I don't think they would have loved the uh, the Lashley finish, but they would have at least accepted it. But the Charlotte Flair finish, uh, you know, it was, it, yeah, I, I I still can't get over that they even that they even did it. I mean, in this day and age, I mean, I mean, there's the Lashley no, finish was lame, but at least it was like a finish. Like they, I mean, they, at it, least they a, had an, a reason for the guy to be inside the ring, which was Drew wanted the door open for another ref. It was the same thing they did for the very first Hell in a Cell match. That's how they got in and out of the cage. And then there was a one, two, three pinfall. It was distraction. But I mean, as far as WWE finishes go, I mean, that was far superior to she started to take the desk apart and it hit her opponent for the DQ. Well, like I said, that was one of the worst finishes of the year. Maybe the worst. So. Everything's going to be better than that. Like, how can you drop someone on a table and that's okay? But if you go the other way around, it's a DQ. It doesn't even make sense. No, it made no that's sense. That's like if I punched you with brass knuckles, but then you claim that you, or I claim that you head butted the knuckles, and so then it was okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. It make, yeah. It's it, ridiculous. Well, it's ridiculous. It was ridiculous under any circumstance. It was just a terrible finish. I don't know. I don't know what got into him to do that other than, I mean, because usually when it, you know, when it was over, I still felt, well, we're just going to do another match between these two because we got, you know, whatever. We don't want to beat Charlotte, and we want to do it again, and we don't want to change the title. So this is what we came up with, but it's like, man, there is, there is not, I don't, I don't think that there's another wrestling promotion in the world that would have actually subjected their fans to that finish. <laughs> I don't think so. Because um, even AAA would not subject the fans to that finish. 
No way. No way. I, you know, this was this was, um, you know, nobody else. Nobody else would do that finish. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.